What up everybody? How we all doing today? We ran a little late starting today. Um, I got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. A lot of uh, cool stuff that was found. Man, it is really bright. Ooh, man, I'm going to put down the light just a little bit. Um, yeah. Welcome to the Transformer Slag podcast live stream. I am a proto man. I am disheveled. I need a haircut. It was a crazy weekend, uh, to say the least for me, um, and a very busy week for Transformer News, which we're going to go into. And I'm going to talk about why we ran late today. Uh, a lot of stuff was happening today, so it was uh, pretty cool stuff that you're probably going to dig. And especially if you're part of the Patreon, you'll definitely dig it. Um, so let's jump into the news first. We'll jump into the news first, and then we'll get into questions and stuff and everything um, and what was gotten this week. But man, man, today was a busy day. Today was a busy day. Busy, busy day. So let's jump into the first piece of news. And uh, it's that of we had Gigawatt, the special edition, the Walmart limited edition, the numbered edition, started showing up in a lot of people's mailboxes who managed to get those on pre-order. Uh, the sad news about it is that they're kind of easy to bootleg if you have someone that's a CD guy. So be careful if you're trying to buy one of these. Be careful because the numbered sticker, it's all the way in the other corner there. Um, it literally is just that. It is a sticker. It could be replicated. It could be slapped on the box. And while there is aesthetic differences between the two boxes... At the end of the day, if someone's selling it on eBay and you don't know the major differences and you're just looking for that sticker, which could be ev easily bootlegged, um, be careful with that. I mean, the difference between these two, it's like this one over here is going to cost you like, maybe 40 50 bucks. This one's going to cost you maybe $200, $300. Be careful. It's out there. They're scumbags. You got to be careful with that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to just address that because these are the kind of things that I see that in the future there is going to be a problem in the secondary market maybe like a year from now or two years from now when people it's, it's not in the back of their mind anymore the information is not easily readily available to them and they'll be like oh man they're in a convention and they see a numbered gigawatt back to the future and they go oh wow and it's only sixty dollars i'm gonna get it when it was really the retail one that the guy probably got for 30 bucks on clearance and he just went and printed out a fake sticker so be careful of that. I did a segment about it at the beginning of the week, and it really covers what's going on here, more or less. Also talking about what happened at the beginning of the week was a very weird old Walmart exclusive that didn't happen and then kind of did happen, and now cases of it are being found. So for people that didn't see the segment at the beginning of this week, Rampar was originally supposed to be a Walmart exclusive back in, God, what was it, like 2017 or something. And it just never came out. And then it showed up in like closeout stores in the UK. And then it showed up in closeout stores in the United States, like Ross and stuff like that. But it never actually showed up in basic retail for Walmart. Fast forward to just last week, and all of a sudden, cases of these show up in Walmart. Cases of these show up on Walmart's website. So if you didn't pick up the legendary Raven Spar, ooh, Raven Spar, which is pretty much just a Transformers Prime Legion Scale, aka Legend Scale Soundwave. If you didn't get that mold, hey, you could pick it up. I believe it's $10.99, and it's on Walmart right now. I hope it's not sold out as of this recording. So, uh... Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Uh, but yeah, just a, you know, it's, it's just a silly thing. Uh, you know, some people were telling me, oh, I already got this at Ross. Yeah, it was, it was available in closeout stores and small numbers and stuff, but it was actually very difficult to get this. And it's a new character, I guess, when you think about it. Raven Spar. Hey, it's an Autobot too, a black Soundwave repaint that's not ca called Shock Blast. That's an Autobot. Yeah. Okay, sure. So there's that. Next up, we also talked about this last week, but now we have some very good images of that of Deep Cover. So Deep Cover was this mysterious Generation Selects Hasbro Pulse kind of boxed item. We only got to see it in the box. We didn't get to see the alt mode. Uh, an individual by the name of Cheetamus managed to get uh, an in-hand product of it. So we now have a good look at the robot mode and, of course, the alt mode. Very true. 
to the original e-hobby toy has the little police logos on the sides of the doors has it on the chest the autobot logo on the hood of the car as well as on the chest of the robot is accurate to that of the original e-hobby toy all cool stuff really dig this one looks really nice looks like something that'd be a really good companion piece to your g2 sideswipe it really adds to that kind of flavor and color so really dig that a lot awesome stuff next convention news so and also kind of announcement news wonder festival 2021 was canceled for their winter wonder festival um they actually announced just recently that they are going to be doing a web wonder fest so september 7th there will be an online winter fest a wonder festival winter 2021 web reveal exclusive we're probably going to learn about new transformer product this way that's the primary reason why i'm bringing this up uh this is something that they normally show usually probably new masterpieces or new japanese exclusive product or maybe one or two prototypes for stuff for kingdom who knows what is going to be there but all i know is this is happening it's going to be september 7th so we're going to get new information we're going to learn all about that kind of stuff what's up damon uh we're going to get all kinds of uh of stuff that's going to be shown off so that's pretty cool that's pretty 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 cool next up also in relation to japanese stuff uh hero x uh they were kind of quiet for the second half of 2020 they're the company that's behind all those awesome transformers generation guidebooks hobby link japan uh in in relation with another company they put together that beast wars generations guidebook that popped up at the end of december so they announced today that it's the rebirth they're back they're doing generation guidebooks again so expect one this spring in 2021 what is it going to be about probably studio series 86 probably other studio series stuff maybe kingdom we're going to find out maybe with the war for cybertron stuff the generation guidebooks are complete guidebooks in 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 relation to specific parts of transformers lore and products so these are amazing books i collect them i have a wall of them and it's really great to hear that they're back in business and doing stuff after their kind of absence for a good half a year to almost a year really in 2020 again 2020 was a crazy year for a lot of people all over the world and it's no surprise that even that of the amazing guys at hero x and all the books that they do that got kind of slowed down and speaking of amazing books let's talk about next month in february get ready for your wednesday new comic book day beast wars is going to be coming out the reason why i'm talking about it again today was we got to finally see the cover art for issue number three done by the amazing joshua perez i don't know if he's in the chat here today um but his cover is there all the way on the right for you guys really cool nice beefy cover art with all the different characters really dig that a lot and of course what you see on the left is ish all the covers for issue number one for the launch issue so you have cover a cover b and the ones on the bottom are retailer incentive a and b so retail incentive incentives people don't know that certain comic book stores if they order a certain amount they end up getting extra books with with variant covers they're very rare to get those covers so if you want those covers be sure to talk to your local comic book store and try to arrange some way in order to get those before everyone else because those are going to be the tough covers to get again i'm super excited about this book we already got a three-page preview for it that popped up and it looks like some really good stuff it really really looks like some really good stuff it, it really goes in that same vein it's kind of like a a reboot retelling so far of the beast wars story and i'm down for that looks really good very excited about it check that out next piece of history showed up just a couple of days ago let's talk about these costumes that showed up now i did a full segment about these if you want to learn more about it after you're, we're done here today check in the the, the queue of the archive it was about two or three days ago i talked all about the history of these but long story short for people that that didn't catch it uh these two costumes which were used through all kinds of different transformer commercial and promotional stuff and live appearances and everything back in 1985 and 1986 these two costumes which were very 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 interesting pieces of transformer history that just we didn't know much about them they showed up out of nowhere in in some guy's warehouse and they're in immaculate condition 
And now, like, you know, this image here is an old image from back in 1985 at Universal Studios at Transformers Base Camp. And it's great to see that some of these costumes survive and they're probably going to fall into the hands of collectors. I hope they don't get messed up. They look amazing. And go watch my segment. In my segment, I talk about all the stuff in relation to where these guys first showed up and why this is such exciting news. And then in that same segment, in the comment section, I posted links to all the different commercials they were in, all the different live appearances, so you could watch all of that. It's very cool stuff, very fascinating piece of Transformer history. And you think you know it all, you think you've seen it all, you think everything has been unearthed and seen, and then out of nowhere, somewhere in some warehouse, there still is stuff to be found all these years later. These costumes, man, we're talking, it's coming up to... It's coming up to like 35 plus years now at this point. And they survived. Even like it's crazy. I was talking with someone else about this. Um, the Ninja Turtle costumes from the Ninja Turtle movies. Even those are destroyed. But yet these things survive. Now granted these ones are probably paper mache. You know there's hockey gloves. There's loafers. They're a lot more uh, versatile I guess is the best way to say. Um, but it's really good. Jaws Z needs to be that jazz. I don't think Wendell's ever cosplayed. <laughs> I don't, actually, you know what? I take that back. Halloween, I guess, but never anything convention related. It'd be, you know what? He should do pretender jazz. He should have like the whole pretender jazz get up there, like the human form. That would be really cool. That'd be really cool to do that. Do it right. Make them black. But uh, yeah, that's awesome stuff. Really cool. Again, check out my segment afterwards where I talked about it. It was like a good, I want to say a good 18 to 20 minutes I talked about it. And there's tons of footage and everything. Really cool stuff. It's probably the only time you'll ever see O.J. Simpson and the Transformers said in the same sentence. But yeah, <laughs> weird stuff, but still awesome. Next up, let's go into our new Transformer series, at least from what we know, and new toys, in that of what's going on with Cyberverse. So these listings popped up on the Walmart app and it's an indicator of what's going on for Transformers Cyberverse Season 4. What are the toys? What are we getting? What's going to be happening? Some of it is, I use the term toy spoilers, meaning like they're toys that kind of spoil fiction. And we have all of this, Ultimate Season 4 Hot Rod, Sludge, you know, Slug, which is uh, Slag. Cheetor is going to be getting a deluxe. Ramjet's going to be getting a better toy. Volcanicus, maybe that means combiner Dinobots in this. Whole assortments of Roland combined. That could be a new play pattern, a new gimmick. Transforming, uh, excuse me, Roland Transform, another kind of play pattern, probably maybe like the Auto Rollers. We have a Dino Prime, so I guess Optimus Prime is going to be a dinosaur at some point. There's so much stuff here. I try to deconstruct it as much as I can in my segment. I try to explain everything so you can understand what everything is going on here. And of course we have bot bots at the bottom there with the dinosaur dino store, um, which should be interesting. I'm kind of curious what that is. Could be, you know, like a fossil transformer that isn't just a fossilizer, like a piece of amber, kind of like uh, Jurassic Park style. But uh, looks really cool. Looks cool. I'm, I'm glad to see I'm glad to see that Cyberverse is still going. Um, we just, you know, after we had Earthrise end, it was pretty, pretty empty to know what we were getting in terms of Transformer fiction on the screen. We know what we're having with our comics. We have our comics. Those are pretty, you know, packed. But in terms of what's happening on the TV screen or the big movie, we're still up in the air. And at least we know that Cyberverse, we have these two TV movies that are coming, assuming they were two hours each. That's four hours of content. If Transformer Cyberverse episodes are 10 minutes each, that's, you know, 26 episodes of, of content. If you kind of break it down from the, from the four hours of content, so that gives us about 26 episodes. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. I'm excited about that. That's a lot of cool stuff. A lot of dino stuff. A lot of dino stuff. And again, I break it down like crazy in the segment. We also had another listing that popped up and uh, we kind of knew about this one already, but now this kind of makes it really official. And uh, we have finally the UPC code and the full Walmart listing and everything like that for Transformers Studio Series 86 slag and Daniel. So uh, this Transformer slag and this Daniel is gonna have some kind of leader class happening at some point. Very interesting to see what they're going to do with this. I'm still surprised more than anything that they're using the Slag name. I think it, I still think it's just a placeholder. I really do. I still think it's going to be Slug 
But if they somehow pull off using slag, hey, that's awesome. Maybe we'll see more of that in the future. But at the, at the time right now, the only slag you're going to see is this one right here <laughs> on the podcast. Uh, but we'll see what happens with that. It's still still too early to say, but at least we know it's still it's confirmed. There was rumors before, and now these rumors are true. Next up, we have what was... I don't want to call it like fake news. I just want to call it like misjudged news. This image was going around all over the internet two days ago, and I was ignoring it because I thought that people knew where it came from. And then I saw how different individuals were talking about this and giving the wrong information. So anyone that, that doesn't know, this Cheetor is not the Cheetor design being used for a Beast Wars movie. We still don't know what's happening with the Beast Wars movie. We still don't know if they're even technically 100% is going to be a Beast Wars movie. So as it stands right now, we have nothing. We know that James Vanderbilt was doing a script. You know, we knew that, you know, there was going to be a Bumblebee 2 movie also working at the same time. This art here was done by Rob Wiggins. Rob, you know, left Hasbro like four years ago. You know, like this is old Age of Extinction era kind of art. And it's just, it's old stuff. It's not related to what we're getting. It's, it's just, there was so much misinformation with that. And it was such a headache because so many people were showing it to me. And I was going like, guys, guys, this was actually like in the news years ago. And why this is bubbling up again, I don't know. So I just wanted to bring it up again just because people were confused. And some people were, were making you know news about this, how this is the, the real deal. It's not. It's incorrect. Uh, you heard it here. And speaking of other wrong news, more stuff. More stuff that was shown to me today that, I mean, it's, I don't know what's going on, guys. Is it, are, have we reached a point now where, like, I have, I've been in the Transformer online fandom since its beginning in 1996. Actually, like, even late 95. And I have never seen such an influx of people making fake images and fake news and fake kind of stuff like I've seen ever in the past two years. I don't know, maybe it's because... So there's just a younger demographic that's joining the fandom and they just like to see the world burn and they just like trolling and stuff. But it's nuts because this was sent to me like crazy by so many people. I was out grocery shopping and my phone was blazing with this one here. And it was that of, oh my God, here is wave three of the Headmaster's Walmart assortment. And it was just me going like, oh my God. Oh God, guys. So if this was real, keep in mind, if this was real, back to that, this would have been awesome. Granted, you don't think I would have liked this to happen? Hey, we get Sideways. Sideways is kind of a headmaster, you know, so he would have been cool to have, the, have there. But then again, this entire line has been reissues. What are they going to do? Reissue the old Armada toy? I doubt that. Fangry is here. Okay, maybe they're going to reissue the old Fangry toy. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. But the last one here was what really set up the red flag with me. And when I saw the pink colored chrome dome and I was going like, oh, no, they didn't. I knew right away where that art came from. And it was like, man, this is how I knew it was fake. This here is art that was done by an old buddy in the Transformer fandom, Zabavor. He's been in the fandom since like, oh, man, like 97 and he did this digital art, I want to say like 2006, 2007, and then he uploaded it on his DeviantArt, maybe like a couple, maybe, I don't know, like five years ago, six years ago. And someone took his art and these two pieces of Dreamwave art done by, I think it was like Pat Lee or someone, they took these two pieces of Dreamwave art, Zobivore's art, and then they slapped it in this and they thought that they were going to be fooling people. And so many of this was sent to me. Guys, I don't think it's real. Look, I'd like for it to be real because it'd be cool to get a new Sideways figure and Sideways is up for a renewal anyways with his trademark. But that being said, I don't think it's real. I think this is people just trolling people again, messing with people. Ugh, I don't know. It's I haven't seen such an influx of this silliness in so long. Let me get a sip of water here. 
in so long that it's just it's silly it's silly that this is happening and it's making people get excited for nothing but at the end of the day <clears throat> it was just a very i almost feel like this was done before photoshop even was a thing uh it was a very early photoshopped digi bash done many years ago and somehow now people are are making oh what up josh are making all kinds of stuff out of it anyways that being said that's it for this news this week um not much else really to say so the last thing i just want to say is it's been a crazy week today was absolutely nuts for me um it was super busy we had a ton of snow that dropped on us out of nowhere and uh, i had to dig out a good old car and stuff i'm not even wearing like the, i had to wear like my my more casual kind of going out mechanic kind of stuff still got the symbiote studio stuff which i might as well also mention so what i got in the mail what i got in the mail was symbiote studios sent me all the latest of the plush so i got the megatron now got the megatron really cool i got the cobra commander that's pretty cool that one i really like the cobra commander i didn't realize how nice the details were on him very very nice and of course he has the pin, the cool Cobra Commander pin, so that's really cool. And the best one, and that's why I'm wearing this shirt today, the Symbiote Studio shirt of Timber and Snake Eyes. Timber and Snake Eyes. I love this little Timber. He even comes his own bag. That is, oh, it's so cute. I'm a big dog person. Oh, granted, Timber's a wolf, but that is adorable. Really cool. And again, Snake Eyes. He has his pin there. Got these in the mail today. Pretty, pretty cool symbiotestudios.com if you're interested in those guys check them out they are really cool dudes and you know they provide all the the pins and the shirts for the podcast and stuff like that they have a lot of also non-transformer related stuff too so definitely check that stuff out but that was one thing i got the second thing where i got really backed up today was i was contacted by someone who was selling a majority of their toy collection huge chunks of their toy collection some of that i've known for many years that was like kind of a casual in and out collector of transformers but he really collected kind of everything and he's like yo bro i'm just getting rid of a bunch of stuff and i'm like well what do you have of transformers he's like oh it's too much to list i'm like well then just take some photos he's like okay so he sent me this and he's like how about how about 40 dollars canadian for everything which is about like $34 American for all of this. And I was like, I'm getting in my car right now. <laughs> so essentially I bought this massive collection of primarily 2008 to about 2014 transformer stuff. It's a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of generations, a little bit of, uh, of War for Cybertron, as in like the old video game, a little bit of everything, but even mixed in there is Power Rangers stuff. There was, there was mixed in there um, some uh, bot, bot shots, all kinds of crazy stuff. But $40 Canadian for all of it, I couldn't pass that up. What a great deal. There was so much stuff in there. And oddly enough, as crazy as it is, and people know me, you know, like oddly enough of the stuff that I was missing out of all of that, like this guy, you know, I didn't have like these flip changers of like the, you know, these were like the, the cheapy, obscure, gimmicky kind of stuff during Age of Extinction. This was, um, I forget what her name was in the movie, but it was the daughter of Cade, uh, his, her boyfriend. This was his car, which it, he didn't, the car didn't transform in the movie, but apparently they made a toy of it. And then of course you have the same thing. You have like a Prowl one. It's kind of cool. It has like a blade there. That's kind of cool. But these are like, you know, again, I never really pick these up because these things, when they're brand new, they're like seven, eight dollars. And I'm just like, eh, whatever. Also, this one here, the, the one step changer, this is of uh, Steel Jaw from Age of Extinction. I never got this figure. This is actually the only figure of Steel Jaw that exists. And he was also like one of these like one step kind of very simple transformation stuff. So didn't have him in that whole collection. And then this one's the weird one. The trans, uh, the trans Transformer Star Wars crossover uh, Darth Maul. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't have the weapons. And let me tell you something. There was thousands of parts in here 
for stuff that wasn't pr present. Like, you see that big, clear sword there that's just sitting on top of everything? That's the sword for the ultimate class Age of Extinction Grimlock. That wasn't part of the collection. He just had a whole bunch of parts, pieces, transformers, and I was just piecing everything together today. I ran super late. And before I knew it, I'm like, oh my God, I got to do the stream tonight. I've, you know, there's so much going on, but it's a lot of stuff. So a lot of the extra stuff, like, especially like, I have, oh my God, there must have been like, I want to say like 40 bot shots. So, and some of them that I honestly didn't have, I'm going to throw in some of the small stuff for the higher tier patrons of the Patreon. So if you're part of the Patreon, the next time I do a little gift send out and stuff like that, you're probably going to get a bot shot or something or some kind of small transformer. Cause there's like a lot of, there's transformer prime in there. There's bot shots in there. There's transformers war for Cybertron, the video game. There's a lot of movie product. There's the cyberverse cyberverse is in the small scale cyberverse stuff. There's power ranger ranger keys. There is all kinds of crazy stuff in there. Pretty, pretty crazy. A lot of it that that's in better condition, the larger price stuff. I will be selling, but I'm probably going to sell it at TFCon. It's pro I'm probably going to save it for the parts party. There's no cons right now. I'm not really someone that likes to sell online because shipping from Canada to people in the States is brutal. Like People are like, oh, I want to buy that. Okay, uh, shipping's $20. It's, it's not cheap shipping. It really isn't. So that's why a lot of times people want to buy from me, and I don't mind selling, but shipping is going to be brutal. That's the warning I just got to give people. So usually I'm just better off just I sit on this stuff. And then when I do my big crazy parts parties at TFCon, you get tons of crazy stuff. You could buy a ton of cheap stuff. Because again, if my investment was only like, again, from American uh, pricing, if my investment was only like $34 American, then you know how cheap all of this is going to be individually per unit. I got what I wanted from it, the little things here and there. And the rest of it is just whatevs, you know, like I had, and there's so many extra pieces and parts. I have, there's like the gun for human Alliance lead foot. And I don't think I'm ever going to see a human Alliance lead foot in the wild ever. But yet for some reason I have the gun now, you know, like it's, it was such a weird, 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 weird collection, such a weird collection. But this guy was just unloading. So he's like, Oh, all my power Rangers, all my transformers, take it all. So I just zoomed over there, but it was an hour drive each way. So it was a little bit out of the way. So it was like two hours of driving for this. And because everything's on lockdown over here, it's not like I could go out there and then do some shopping. It was, it was a very crazy, hectic day to say the least for me. Got home, had to eat, sort all this stuff, go through it all, make sure that everything is, you know, more or less, you know, in, in a decent condition. Take out the guys that I was excited about. There's a few others too. I, um, who else did I take out from this? There was a uh, uh, Age of Extinction, another One Step, Silver Optimus Prime. Little things here and there. Again, all the stuff that I'm missing is usually the weird price point stuff that I would normally never, never pay full retail for. Because this stuff just, it, it so many of these end up in the secondary market through kids and everything. And it doesn't surprise me. But yeah, that being said, so how was your week? <laughs> We'll open it up to questions. I'm going to uh, try to do as many as we could today. 100, 100 Chicken McNuggets in two hours. <laughs> oh, man. Anyone who saw my Chicken McNugget BotCon video back in the day, that was, uh, that was something else. So let's get started. Protoman, do you think we could get a repaint of Kingdom Warpath into e-hobby variant treads? Well, the 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 GoBot stuff I would love to see more of. And actually, funny thing about it, somewhere in here was one of those GoBot homages. I think it was, I forget which one it was. I think it was Reverb. They can't see it here in this photo. But yeah, he was also in there. I love it when they do GoBot repaints. I really love it when they do that kind of stuff. And... Oh, Josh, I can't tell you about my Beast Wars original character. And please don't tell me he's in the comic. Please don't. I swear that'll kill me. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that's old Transformers lore. But I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But getting... Uh, I, I would love to see more GoBot homages and stuff like that. I would really, 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 really like to see um, more of that. But it's, 
it's really something where it's like, do you think Hasbro would want to take, you know, like Warpath and then do an obscure green repaint? I the like again, if Bacon existed back in the day, I could see it kind of happening. They do like a crazy, especially with all the mini bots we're getting now. They could do some crazy like Return of the Go Bots box set or something. But I really don't think uh, we'll be getting that. As much as I would love that, I would love it. But I don't really think when they if they're gonna do a green tank, they're gonna do bludgeon. That's kind of their go to. Like they go, oh, green tank, bludgeon. Uh, green tank with camo, G two Megatron. Uh, green tank, but it's not a tank. It's like a Humvee. Okay, it's it's bulkhead. You know, like they have certain like go tos, like with certain characters and certain alt modes. Uh, does Hasbro do variant heads of the same action figures? I'm be I've been reporting that Beast Wars. Yeah, I saw that news about the Megatron. I didn't want to report it yet because I want to get more information on it first. Again, the past few days there's been so much bull news that has been going on that I'm not rushing into anything right now because there's so much stuff where it's like, hey, there's this news and it's fake. And then, hey, there's this news and it's fake. So I'm going to wait for now. I'm going to wait, but I did hear about it. I might talk about it in a few days when I get more information about it. I, when I got home, I was so swamped from that collection and stuff. It was two big heavy bags and I had to pour it all in my living room and start piecing through every missile and every piece. There was so much stuff. Oof, it was. I'm still not even done. It's still a mess up there. So... Hey, Proto, do you know which production company did the 80s Takara Transformer toy commercials, or where can I find any behind-the-scenes material? The belief is, is that it was Tokyo Studio Shusha that did them or whatever. Um, but even then, look, some of those early commercials were also done by Sunbow. You know, like, like some of those early, early, early commercials were clearly done by Marvel Internal. When there was the commercials that were like pretty much advertising the Marvel comics, they had their own production studio. Now, who did they outsource within Sunbow to do it? Probably the Korean studios, maybe Nelson Shin stuff. You know, who knows? We'll see. You know, it's something that uh, at one day we're going to have some kind of book or something that's going to talk about the history of that. And then we'll maybe get a deeper indication. Something that's not very talked about too much. I know that there's, there's this old footage of Stan Lee talking about um, the production of Spider-Man and his amazing friends. And it's like this behind the scenes kind of stuff. And Spider-Man and his amazing friends, when it was out at the time and they were recording that footage, they were working on Transformers. And you could see there's like some quick scenes. If you blink, you miss it. You'll see when they're, they, I think they're working on the 86 movie at that time, which was being worked on in 84. And there's so much like stuff that we don't know about from the production and the past of Transformers. Like there's, you know, there's so many things with, um, what was her name? Margaret, Margaret something, who was like also one of the production designers and production uh, heads of uh, Marvel Entertainment. Like there was all kinds of behind the scenes stuff that was going on that just never happened with Transformers compared to what we have today. I'd love to learn more about it, but that's, that's like a whole contingency of people that it was just like a job to them. And then when they moved away from that. They never revisited and talked about it. Like we don't have like, like in the gem and holograms world, they have Christie marks. We don't have like the Christie marks of the transformer world. Like we look to like Simon Furman or Flint Dilly or, you know, whoever's still alive, even if that would have been, you know, David Wise even, or Bob Bugansky, but it's just some of those guys, like they just, they don't have much to say because they don't really know as much as anyone else. So uh, I wish I had an answer for that one for you. Um, where are we at? Sorry if I miss any questions. Everything gets boosted up when I start ranting. <laughs> um, Proto, what mold do you think Kingdom Wingfinger and Slammer will be? Well, the belief with Slammer, I'll start with that one, is everyone saying it's going to be some kind of retool of Warpath, like a white repaint, which I could believe. It'll be the easy route. You know, no point, like, you know, remolding a brand new tank and everything. Uh, excuse me, re not remolding, making a whole new mold for a brand new tank when you could just take you know warpath you know change the head of the tank a little bit change the head of the robot mode you know and give slammer his first ever you know uh full legitimate robot mode ever we got a super chat question by stinkfist69 <laughs> love the name stinkfist hope you could fit it up there uh, what's up? Are you getting the Haslab Unicrom and do you feel it's worth it? Would it be considered your crown jewel? 
I, I am getting the HasLab Unicron. I did pay for it all those years in advance now. It's like, it's crazy. Like, I think it's been three years now. I don't know. Feels like it's been a while. Um, yes, I am getting it. Would it be my crown jewel? Probably not. I mean, I mean, I got Minerva back there. If you look a little, if you, if I move my head even more, you know, you got Metal Hawk. Metal Hawk, Minerva, Mint in Box. Those are e easily clear $1,000. I'm more proud of those. Rodimus prototypes. Um, there's so many other cooler stuff that, that I'm, you know, is Unicron going to be cool? Yeah, he's going to be awesome. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he's going to be the biggest Transformer ever made. I have a spot, no joke, right up here. See all this empty wall here? When do you ever see empty wall in any, any of my streams? He's going right there next to that nice hot rod, you know? So, I mean, the way that I see it, like, let me fix the camera. I just messed it up there. Um, the way that I see it, yeah, of course I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get Unicron. He's on his way, but at the same time, you know, it's, he looks fun. He looks fun. He looks cool. He's the big, like, if he was something that was a HasLab thing and he was a Supreme Scale, I think I would have been less excited about it because we already have so many Supreme Scale Unicrons, but it's cool. He's going to be huge. He has this huge, you know, mode. They say he's going to weigh like 20 pounds, which is the most heaviest Transformer up to this point. Before that, it was the original OG 1987 Fortress Maximus with his metal core. He was the heaviest, and he's still, man, sometimes when I pick him up with one hand, it's a heavy toy. But, nah, like, you know, super hybrid Rodimus, who is like, you know, one of 12 made in the world. I love that figure. That's probably my crown jewel. Maybe the, you know, God Primus, Lucky Draw, the gold Rodimus, you know, that's probably another one. There's a lot of really cool stuff that I have in my collection. I don't, I don't know if I would count Unicron as a crown jewel. He's definitely would be one of the really cool items. He'll be, he'll be a conversation piece staring at me right there for the rest of my life. He'll be, every time I'm going to look up from you guys looking that way, I'm going to be seeing Unicron. But yeah, thanks for the super chat question, brother. Thanks for the super chat question. Uh, let's scroll back up here, see if I any, missed anything. Uh, Dear Proto, have you ever repurposed a figure to represent a different character on the shelves? Are you planning to use G2 Ramjet to represent Weezing Arrow from the sub? So many years ago, and I still have it to this day. I want to show you guys something. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me pull it out. And I'm not pulling that out. I'm pulling something else out. Um, I did something just that. So long before, long before Classics was a thing. Well, I probably should have got the... Uh, I need a, I need to use a superlink key or something. One moment, otherwise this gimmick's not going to work. There we go. There we go. So many years ago, when when I think it was like 2005, I want to say, uh, when this guy came out, Excelion, um, we didn't have classics. We didn't have, you know, anything of like new hot rod figures outside of that Rodimus. So I repurposed him as my hot rod. So much so, now keep in mind, he came with these clear, you can see here, clear wings for his back. I took the regular colored hot shot that had the yellow wings, bought an extra one, gutted it, and gave him a very hot rod looking, and this is my custom. It's the closest you'll ever see to me really doing customs. So you have like, and this guy was, for at least two years, my modern hot rod toy. There was no masterpiece at the time. There was no classics. There was none of that. None of that at all. And so that's uh, one example of repurposing. Other ones, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I ever really repurposed much else. As a kid, as a kid, I did it a lot. Because as a kid, I had nothing. My little overdrive MicroMaster was hot rod. Fix It was, was uh, Ratchet. Um, the front end of, I think his name was Pipeline. No, it was Power Punch. The front end of Power Punch was my Optimus Prime. The back end, which was Pipeline, was my Megatron. Like, I had to repurpose like crazy when I was a kid because I just didn't, I didn't have anything. Blaster, G1 Blaster, because he was so big compared to my MicroMasters, he was Autobot City. He was Metroplex. I used to do that all the time. I have old photos of that from when I was a child where I used to lie down Blaster and I'd like half transform him and I'd pretend he was Autobot City for my MicroMasters. 
I used to do that kind of stuff all the time. Today, you know, you don't really, I don't really re repurpose that much because I think the repurposing more happened when we had Energon and Cybertron and, and classics didn't exist yet. So when you got like, you know, Energon Starscream or something, it was your G1 Starscream. It was your new one. When you got like Towline, it was kind of, I guess, Ironhide. But then when we finally got classics and stuff like that, that wasn't really the case anymore. It's a good question though. I like that. Because it really got me to think a little bit about that kind of stuff. Um, where we at? Where we at? Do you think Soundwave would like Desposito? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I guess you're referring to Cyberverse Soundwave. Well, you know, if the writers the writers say all kinds of wacky stuff, it doesn't really mean it's canon. If it's not in the show, it didn't happen. You know, <laughs> that's how I feel. Uh, Proto, if Razor Ramon was a Transformer, would his G would G2 Ramjet be his persona? Razor Ramon did wear purple at one point. Um, he's more famous more for his green color scheme. I believe Survivor Series, no, not Survivor Series, Royal Rumble 92. He wore of a red and gold kind of pattern. Um, but green, I always associate Razor Ramon kind of with the green kind of color scheme. Uh, probably maybe because of all the video games that he was in, like WrestleMania, the arcade game. Uh, but I could see the G2. He did wear purple once. I think he wore purple, I want to say, the second ladder match. Now I'm talking wrestling now, and I'm losing half the audience. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but, yeah, I could see that a little bit. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Sorry, I'm losing everything here. I want to scroll up a little bit, see if I didn't miss anything. Proto, what mold could you see for Wing Finger? Um, well, see, I'd like to believe, personally, up to this point, all of the fossilizers we've gotten have been dino-based. So if it's going to have wings, we're going to that pterodactyl kind of route. The thing is, is that something that's going to be, you know pterosaur infused like it's a it's a it's a fossilizer but then later on it could be used to make pterosaur or is this we're gonna get this and we're gonna get no pterosaur so i want to say that it's gonna be a terror we got a super chat i'll get to you in a moment my michael ku um but yeah I, I don't know i think it's gonna be a pterodactyl unfortunately because that look look at all the other fossilizers up to this point they've all been reptiles or dinos so michael ku with the fossilizer thank you a uh, fossilizer now you know I'm tired today. Uh, Michael Koo with the super chat question. Thank you, Michael. And he's going to be asking Proto with the high presses for Masterpiece Starscream and Masterpiece Thundercracker, along with the complaints with MPRC, is the MP line in trouble? Not really. I think that um, the complaints usually come from the Western world. And Masterpieces, at the end of the day, are Japanese-made products made for a Japanese audience. And anyone who imports it, that's just extra cheese, you know? If, if Hasbro really knew that Masterpieces were a prime selling product, they would import them more and sell them in retail. And they do it through a distributor like, let's say, GameStop or someplace that would want to have Masterpieces on the shelves. And outside of movie Masterpieces, we don't see that anymore. We really don't. So the Western audience of Masterpiece collectors is significantly less add also to the fact that the Western audience is way more willing to adopt third-party uh, facsimiles as opposed to, say, the Japanese market. So at the end of the day, what are the Japanese fans saying? What are the Japanese sales? To me, that's when I would feel if it was in trouble. If the Japanese fans are not buying it, if the Japanese fans don't like it, that's when we know it's not doing well. I look back to any time I have like these Japanese lines that I really like and then all of a sudden they suddenly stop. Like Mario, Super Mario did an SH Figure Arts line. They did Super Mario, they did Luigi, they did Yoshi, they did like, you know, all these different character packs. And then they did Bowser. It was received badly. People didn't like the scale. This is Japan and it didn't sell well in Japan. And pff, the whole line died. Same thing with Mega Man. They did a whole bunch of SH Figure Art Mega Mans, and then they did a couple of zeros. They didn't sell well, and the line died. 
So it's kind of the same thing. How well is Masterpiece doing in Japan? And then we'll know if it's in trouble. And I'll be honest with you, Masterpiece seems to be doing still very well in Japan. It still keeps trucking forward. I pay attention to the secondary market of stuff all the time. Mandarake, Akihabara, all of that kind of stuff. Even the Funjuku sales stuff. I don't see many Masterpieces in the secondary market. People are buying them and keeping them. And in a country where space is a, is a commodity... If you're going to have a figure in display, you're going to want to have the best version of that figure. And a Japanese guy, I guess he's willing to spend, you know, 20,000 yen, or excuse me, 200,000 yen to get a Starscream as opposed to, you know, a smaller retail War for Cybertron kind of thing, like an Earthrise Starscream. That's what I think anyhow. I don't think it's in trouble. I think they are keep trucking forward. They keep doing well. They keep doing well. Next up, thank you for the super chat question, by the way, Michael. Um, where are we at? Where is the next question? Someone else gave the yellow wings on Excelion as well. Very good. Great minds think alike. Bumble Bastion. Hey, Proto, how is it that not many people care about Transformers these days except middle-aged men you put themselves in debt? No offense. Number one, I'm not in debt. Number two, if I'm middle-aged... What would be middle age? Middle age would be 40, I guess. I'm not 40. So, and I'm I'm someone who grew up on G1. I'm not in debt, maybe because I'm really good with my money. You know, this all wasn't bought, you know, at retail. Let me tell you. <laughs> this was bought being smart. Stuff like this. Oh, this, you know, that's how that happens. Um, no, Transformers is still popular. It's still, it's still a, a big brand for the company but it's just that when you have a year that doesn't have a movie you don't have that mainstream hype and mainstream hype is the most important it's the same way if you took the percentage of marvel fans that were like hardcore comic book reading marvel fans it's such a small percentage compared to the chunk of mainstream people that go to see those movies that really go to see them and the only reason why they know who thanos is is because of a movie i will never forget watching that first Avengers movie in theaters and there was the after the credit scene where they're like and they welcome death and then Thanos turns his head and reveals his head for the first time and he smiles there was two guys in front of me they looked at each other I think it was two rows ahead of me I remember it was with Jaws D they looked at each other and went oh man Hellboy's gonna be in the movies and I was dying I was dying. I was like, oh my God, Thanos. And then those two guys said that. And I was dying. Which shows, like, you know, they, the, the mainstream audience, while they don't have the, the, the abrupt hardcore knowledge, they do make up a majority of the buying power. And right now, Transformers doesn't have a movie. There is no TV series, so a younger audience it doesn't have something to consume either. There really is just Netflix and comic books. And I hate to say it, I love my comic books, but comic book readers usually aren't a younger, younger demographic. It's an older demographic. And Netflix, either you have it or you don't. So that's the other issue too. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We got another super chat question from Axe to the Head. Thank you again, Axe to the Head, for all the questions that we've been getting the past couple of weeks. Hey, Proto, if you were tasked to reintroduce the Transformers to the Marvel 616 universe. Nick Fury's uh, referencing Godzilla, Spider-Man, and Savage Land. How would you do it? Myself, they'd run into Magneto. If they'd run into Magneto, they'd be in big trouble. Um, if you want to introduce them to the 616 universe, you know, you need to have something that would be a bridge that would make it very easy and it's the same way how now keep in mind let's say we're doing transformers as part of the marvel cinematic universe but none of the other hasbro properties like we can't bring in gi joe we can't bring in rom the space knight and and all the other stuff and mask we're just going to bring in transformers then that's a tony stark thing i know we don't have robert downey jr anymore but that's a tony stark thing that's a using what's left of like some damaged infinity stones or something kind of thing where you open up trans-dimensional por portals or use the space stone to go to Cybertron. Like there's all kinds of different ways you could write that, but that's just how to first get to there, like get to that point. Afterwards, the story you write there, I always say it, use the legendary seven, 
Start with those characters and then work it from there. Don't drop too many characters in people's laps. That's such a big mistake. Give them Optimus, give them Bumblebee, give them Grimlock, give them uh, Starscream, give them Megatron, give them Soundwave, maybe Devastator. That's what you do. You don't do any more than that. You give, you spoon feed them the mainstream audience, the most popular characters of Transformer lore, introduce them to that, and then you could do another movie, introduce more characters. But the biggest mistake you could ever do, and even Marvel movies are guilty of this in the past, um, introducing too many characters at once. You know, like you could date, you could go all the way back to Spider-Man Three, where they introduced like four different villains and stuff like that. Way too much stuff. You gotta, you gotta focus. When you have two, maybe two and a half hours to tell a story, you gotta, you gotta really focus. Thank you for the super chat question, though. Really good one. We have another super chat question from Vic, uh, Vicker and Flips Animation. Hey, Proto Man, what is your favorite Studio Series toy? Well, I'm not going to count Hot Rod that came out recently in Studio Series 86 because it would be him. Um, I would have to go with, if you don't count Hot Rod, because like none of the recent stuff. How about I'll just ignore all of that? Because that stuff is all stellar because it speaks way too much to me. Um, I'm going to go with Studio Series Bumblebee Movie Optimus Prime. That was, like, I when I got him, I was like, okay, it's a... Wow, he's he's really cool. He's very well done. A lot of good paint on him, too. I was very surprised because, like, I have, like, I have some that I keep nearby. I have some of, the, like, the, the other Bumblebee Movie Studio Series stuff and some of, the, like, some of the Age of Extinction and, and The Last Night, and it is not good. Like, that, that army tank hot rod there that whatever one you want to call it i was so disappointed with that one it was so loose and kind of janky but that optimus that optimus is really 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 good really good definitely i know he's a little difficult to get now he's kind of rotated out and retired from retail in a lot of ways but if you can get him for like 25 bucks let's say loose complete i wouldn't put it against you he's a really good figure really good i would definitely get him i like him a lot a lot of the others unfortunately like especially when it comes to some of the other movie stuff it's like i've had so many versions of them like i can't stress enough like any everyone who's seen my my wall of movie toys here like you know ignore what's behind me here the, the movie toy wall here is is too much that you know you kind of get bored with another ratchet and another jazz and another Bumblebee and stuff like that. But the Optimus was a pleasant surprise, the Bumblebee one. So if you could get that Cybertronian Optimus, that's a really cool one. Not counting, again, anything we've gotten with Studio Series 86. Because those are... Uh, that Hot Rod is... That's some beautiful stuff. Needs to change those yellow shins, though. And needs to change a spoiler, but everything else. Orlando Chavez gave a super chat, but he didn't ask a question. Orlando, brother, ask a question. Don't just donate. I know that people want to just donate money, but ask a question too, please, when you donate. But thank you for the super chat. But you should ask a question too. Or if you just say something and I'll shout you out. <laughs> uh, hey, Proto Man, if you, kill, if you had to kill a Transformer character, who would you kill? I don't know. I don't know. It's, there's, I, I love Transformers. <laughs> I don't know. I always... my Again, I've always said kind of my kind of my least favorite character and it's not even because i hate him it's just because he was kind of a waste of space was night scream i found that night scream didn't do a lot for beast machines and it's a domino effect of his toys are kind of garbage his design is kind of garbage i don't really like his voice actor his character is kind of annoying uh i find that his existence in beast machines leads to like all kinds of convoluted stuff like why is there a bat on cybertron and it's fossils you know it's I don't know, I've never liked the Night Scream character as a whole just because of everything interlaced around it. If you own a Night Scream toy, the, the Ultra class that's out of scale with everybody, it's going to break if you transform it. Clear plastic, orange, tsh, I broke two of them. Two. I've broken, you know, Beast Wars Megatron twice too. Don't hate Beast Wars Megatron, the, the trans metal, but Night Scream, not worth it. Having to buy that toy twice, not feeling it. Not feeling it. Orlando, did you ask a question, brother? Anywhere here? No, he didn't ask one yet. Orlando, ask a question, brother. Um, so let's go to someone else. Rom and the Space Knights can make a good introduction to Transformer. See, the thing with Rom and the Space Knights was it, it would be cool, but again, I think you're putting too many ingredients into the stew. It's getting too mixed up. 
Because then when you introduce Rom the Space Knights, you got to introduce Rom as a character. And already Marvel has been trying to do their own thing with the Space Knights. They had a book, I think it was in 2016, I want to say. They had a book called The Space Knights where they were trying to do Rom and the Space Knights without the Rom trademark. It was kind of complicated, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Um, I mean, if like Disney really wants to own Marvel, wants to own Hasbro, and Hasbro really doesn't want to be owned by Disney. So I don't know if those two are really going to play ball very often. We had that Transformers Avengers comic book crossover a couple of years ago, but I think that was, I want to say that was pre- that was pre-Disney buyout, I want to say. I think I, it was pre-Disney buyout. But today, I don't know. Today, I can't see it. Star Max wants to know, Hey, Proto, what do you think Hasbro will do for the next Transformers HasLab? Primus, a large arc, a masterpiece combiner. Well, we were supposed to get a masterpiece combiner with Raiden, and then the big V happened, and that completely destroyed that reveal, so I don't know what's happening with that. I think the next HasLab thing in relation to Transformers is going to have to be something more modest and smaller. Um, if it's more modest and smaller, there's a stronger chance of people wanting to put money into it. And then Hasbro could also be more daring because it'll be a very fan-funded kind of thing, not just something that has to be on the shelves and meet all the demographics and stuff like that for uh, a retailer like a Walmart or a Target. Who would it be or what would it be? I don't know, man. It would have to be something that would have to make people excited. So it would have to be like a character that hasn't been done or like, you know, maybe a, a Voyager scale, really good quality DevCon that comes with like some of the aliens from season three or something. Or it, it'd have to be something that would get people excited. But the sad thing is also it has to be something that they could bring to San Diego Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con. Uh, New York Toy Fair and have that be a centerpiece that you could have people hyping like oh this is gonna because when they had Unicron they were bringing that to every show getting people excited about it people were taking photos of it they need to have that centerpiece product that draws people to their booth at all these big conventions when conventions exist again and what would that be it's definitely not going to be DevCon so you have to really ask yourself what would it be would it be Primus but here's the thing. Would you want a Primus that isn't as big as Unicron? Because if they... I, I mean, I've talked about this before. I firmly believe Unicron didn't do as well as people think. And if Unicron didn't do well as people think, Unicron, 86 movie, mainstream, ooh, boom, you know, biggest Transformer. The equity of Primus, where is that in relation to sales? I don't know. I don't know what that. So... I, again, I would like it to be Primus if it could be Unicron's same size. Would I want to pay another huge chunk of money out of my wallet that made me go, ooh, I'm going to feel that as a Canadian. Oh, and the shipping. Ooh, ooh, it's the size of an old television. Uh, man, that was expensive. But either way, either way, I think it's going to be something smaller, but it's going to have to be something exciting. It's going to be, have to be an exciting product. What will that be? That's up to them to decide. I have a few ideas, but uh, I don't think it's going to be any of those anytime soon. Hey, Proto, do you think Takar will ever do reissues of the Powered Masters, Diatlas, and I'll finish the other ones, Sonic Bomber and Road Fire, um, or any of the more obscure Japanese releases? So when John Warden was still doing the Transformer brand, he, did, he had an interview at New York Toy Fair uh, when they were talking about the Bumblebee cassette packs, you know, which came with the dino cassettes, which were those rare Japanese G1 dino cassettes, which I have right over there, the originals. Um, actually, no, they're over there, <laughs> right over there. Um, when those came out, they asked, are you going to do more obscure, rare Japanese stuff? And he said in an interview, I like to do more weird Japanese exclusive stuff revealed, uh, released in the American soil with vintage packaging. What did we get in the end? We got the Headmaster Walmart reissues, which technically are the Japanese-ish kind of reissues with Japanese packaging. And John isn't with the company anymore in terms of the Transformer brand. Now he's with Power Rangers. So 
I don't know if we're going to get that kind of stuff because, number one, the equity of those characters doesn't matter in the Western market. Like, number two, look, you can't see it. They had a character named King Atlas that they trademarked back in 2003, 2004. That trademark's dead. So they don't have a Die Atlas trademark. That King Atlas trademark doesn't exist anymore. Sonic Bomber. They didn't even use Sonic Bomber when Sonic Bomber was called Wing, Wing Saber in, uh, in Galaxy Force. So they'd have to get those trademarks too. I don't... That one is... You're more likely to see that in the Japanese soil. Like when we got that Legends, you know, repaint, remold box set of Sonic... Bo big powered box set pretty much of, of Sonic Bomber, Die Atlas, and Road Fire. You're more likely to see stuff in Japan. Something here, very... Very unlikely. Very, very unlikely. I would love it. I love Transformer Zone. I love Die Atlas. I love Sonic Bomber. I have those guys. They're all chilling over there. But I just, I can't see it happening. I can't. There's, there's too many business-related stuff that get in the way of that. Dear Proto, have you ever noticed how similar Age of Extinction's roll bars color scheme to G2 De Deluge? Uh, his missile pods even match that of the deluge. Uh, I never wondering all that's coincidental. Uh, sometimes it's coincidental. Sometimes, I mean, Age of Extinction, who was the color designer at the time? It wasn't Broly. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it's a color. Sometimes it's a direct homage and they do it on purpose. Sometimes it's just a coincidence. Like uh, Transformers Prime Smokescreen, his arms micron toy. You know, when I first saw it, I'm like, is this an homage to the old Tyco RC Transformer racetrack set? Nope, just a total coincidence. 100% coincidence. No one has ever come forward and said that was meant to be done on purpose. It was just, just happened to be a white car, faded blue stripes with number on the side, red crest. Total coincidence. Proto, what is the most articulated figure you've actually transformed? Well, I've actually transformed everything. Um... I think I talked about this recently, I, and he's probably not the most articulated, but he's definitely one of the most posable. Um, anyone who's ever gotten Beast Wars Transmetal 2 Optimus Minor. Not a very good toy <laughs> in terms of uh, like the alt mode to the robot mode kind of thing, but he's a fun little toy that like literally you can make him like you know do hindu squats you can make him do all kinds of poses and stuff he technically kind of has articulated hands like he's a fun little toy for what he's a good desk former as i use the term like having stuff on your desk to fiddle with uh he's definitely one of the most like posable uh but most articulated i don't know it's probably gonna have to be something a masterpiece i guess i don't know maybe uh, probably maybe uh 3.0 Convoy? No. Star Saber? No, he's too blocky. Who would be the most articulated of the bunch? It's going to be something that has to be high budget. Maybe Unicron. Unicron's going to have those individual fingers and stuff. Maybe one of those Titans. No, nah, those Titans are, have those ratchet joints. Those aren't really very well articulated. But it's it's something in that in that range. Grandis. I wish, I wish there was a Grandis. Uh, hey, Proto, would you like an updated Omnibots? Uh, there's a third-party company that's doing them. Um, I think they're going to come sooner or later. Two, two of the three Omnibots are trademarks that have, Hasbro has. They have Camshaft and they have Downshift. So sooner or later, they're going to have to use those. They're going to have to. And they're going to use them. And, and what they're going to do with uh, Overdrive, I don't know, they'll make a new name. Hyperdrive. You know, they'll do something like that. Uh, where are we at? Sorry if I miss any questions. Can we... Uh, Ninjatron says, can we really do all those poses Dan just did? <laughs> no, I'm telling you, if you actually get... Um, if you actually get Optimus Minor, because of the way his hands are, like, because they could, like, they have, like, these weird... You could kind of make them do, like, these, like, ninjutsu kind of, like, poses and stuff like that. It's kind of... It's an interesting toy. It's a very interesting f toy. Um, it's just, it's not like the greatest Beast Wars toy ever. And he actually shelf warmed like crazy, but, uh, he's one of those toys when, if you get him for like free and or cheap and in me who buys collections, you end up with like a hundred Optimus miners within your lifetime. 
uh, you know, you mess with them sometimes. You go, oh, pretty cool. If I ever get it, like if I ever get another one cheap loose, maybe without the tail, I'll keep them as a desk warmer in the future. Because now I just have my personal collection one. I think I might even have one in for sale still. I'm not too sure. Proto Man, what do you expect from Masterpiece Raiden? Well, I don't expect them to be full size. I like the way I see it is if you kind of look at what uh, Bumblebee scale was as a masterpiece. If they do like Bumblebee scale masterpieces that then combine to make a like Star Saber height masterpiece combiner, I think that's that'll be perfectly acceptable. Those guys were always small figures. Even the original, you know, Microman Diaclone, you know, figures, they were not very big. And in the show, you know, the scales were all over the place. Sometimes they're bigger than Wheelie, sometimes they're smaller than Optimus Prime. So if they're kind of like in that, you know, taller than mini bot size and you could combine them together and make something. Because if I look at Bumblebee, I look at Masterpiece Bumblebee next to Star Saber, Masterpiece Star Saber, I could see it working. Because like Bumblebee, his, like his plastic is enough to make just Star Saber's arm or his leg. So I could see that because Star Saber easily is probably the largest of the Masterpieces. Oh, I don't know. That old Megatron is really tall, too. Yeah, I would still say Star Saber because of his little guns, but I could see that. I could see that. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Dear Proto, what is your favorite moment in Galaxy Force? Oof. I don't want to spoil, but uh, probably the final fight between Masta Galvatron and uh, Galaxy Convoy. A very emotional moment. Episode 51... Fast forward to the last eight minutes. Not episode 52, because that's the last episode. Episode 51. Probably one of my favorite scenes. But there's a lot of great scenes. Like, Galaxy Forces is in my top three favorite Transformer series. Is. So that's a tough one. Um, Proto, should I buy Red Alert from Siege? Do you like Red Alert? Do you like the Cybertronian design? Do I like Red Alert from Siege? I think I do. I don't even know what I own from Siege, because I got everything on cheap clearance. Uh, yes, I do have them. <laughs> um, yeah. I guess. He's okay. It's a good mold. It's, it's, a, it's a little pricey if you got it full price, but it's a good mo mold. Um, hey, Proto, do you have a job, and can you do me a favor and play a video called under the sea spray i can't play a video right now um i do have a job i am a mechanic by trade i fix cars for a living uh subaru jack i don't i don't work for subaru subaru is just one of my favorite car companies um i work on bmws european cars i'm actually not a fan of them personally but <laughs> um uh they pay well they pay well but i usually put all that money into savings and stuff and i have a rule that my paycheck doesn't really dive into my hobby. I try to keep those things separate. And that way, if I buy a $1,000 Transformer toy, it came from, you know, that pot of money, so to speak. Uh, sometimes I do dive into my paycheck, but very rarely. It's, I try to keep them separate. That way I'm able to own a house and be a homeowner. I, I'm, I'm, I, I like to believe I'm good with fi my finances. I'm very good at at money management and finances. And that's why I do transformer finance videos. I'm very frugal when it comes to w when to buy products and stuff. But yes, I do have a job. <laughs> um, and that's another reason why I also ask for the Patreon and for people to super chat because at least that money goes towards this kind of stuff. I, I don't like to take the money that I use for work to put into the hobby. I like to keep those things separate always. And I've done a very good job doing it all these years, let me tell you. Uh, especially during those BACON years where it got kind of pricey sometimes just to do it. Uh, Dear Proto, I'd like to see a studio series of Blitzwing repainted into Overcharge. Well, uh, giving him the old e-hobby homage. Um, well, that would be cool. Obviously, I don't think studio series would do it because they want show accurate, uh, excuse me, screen accurate color schemes. But that would be cool. That would be cool. It would definitely be... Uh, I mean, I'm surprised Overcharge just didn't get a modern generations interpretation with all, with all the new... What did we get? We got two different kinds of Blitzwings so far. We got that one, and then we got the uh, we got the, the Titan Return one, too. I don't know. 
I don't know why they didn't do that. Maybe because overcharge wasn't a big deal. It was just like one of those e-hobby things. Kind of like how we only got a deep cover now after all those years. What was it, 2003 deep cover came out? 2006? Something like that? Proto, do you think Beast Wars Scorponok uh, will be elevated to your boy's status in the IDW Beast Wars? Uh, Scorponok in Beast Wars was unfortunately always one of those characters that always got the shaft um you know died off season one well se season two episode one uh you know gets the 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 crappy transmetal toy through mcdonald's so he didn't even get the proper transmetal toy like uh pterosaur did uh you know then you fast forward and it's like oh he, uh, he had a bot he had a transformer collector club exclusive little figure that was just a repaint of metroplex's uh, scamper you know there wasn't uh you know he he's he's been shafted so much i li I, I like all the Beast Wars characters. It's just, you know, characters like Scorponok and Air Razor, they kind of sit at the bottom because they're, you know, the least interesting of the bunch. I don't hate them, but they they kind of sit at the bottom compared to, like, you know, you can't compare Scorponok and Air Razor to Cheetor or Dinobot. Uh, Black Arachnia, even Pterosaur, you know, had more, more screen time. Tigatron. Like, there's so many other characters. I'm not even going to go into, like, Optimus Primal and Rhinox and Megatron and Tarantulas and I could go on and on. Even Inferno is so, so much more of a fun character. Waspinator. So, a boy status? I don't know about that. <laughs> and for people who don't know what the boy status means, it means like, you know, kind of like a special place. Uh, Proto, do you have any version of Hot Rod Rodimus? Or uh, do you have every version of Hot Rod Rodimus? Or are there a couple you're missing? When you mean version, if you mean mold, I have everything. Uh, the stuff that I am missing of Hot Rod Rodimus Prime is convoluted stuff um number one stuff that isn't out yet stuff that is really new and i just don't have it yet like you know so like a studio series 86 or or convoluted stuff like i don't have the 2001 mint in box reissue of g1 rodimus and yes i collect those too i collect box variants i collect like all those kinds but and when it comes to versions and molds i got it all I got it all. I have a thread. If you go on tfw2005.com, it's called Protoman's uh, Hot Rod Rodimus Collection. It, you could see, and it hasn't been updated in a while, but it just gives you an idea of everything that I have just of that. And it, you guys never see it in any of these videos. It's in its own section that has this beautiful glass case of just everything Rodimus ever. Pillowcases, punching bags, uh, bed sheets, animation cells, all kinds of crazy stuff shopping bags posters anything that's graced his face in a singular nature i'm crazy for that character in case you haven't noticed uh I, hey proto i know this isn't about transformers but i have you seen flame toys snake eyes and storm shadow no i haven't are they what they're doing like for action stuff for for model kits i didn't see that is that news recently that was on yo jo and everything I did not see those, but I'm curious. Now that you mention it, I'd like to see that. Are they are they Farai action, like the action figures, or are they the model kits? Because they're model kits, then I'm really intrigued. I'm curious how they did that. What season of Beast Wars char season one Beast Wars character do you think won't get a new figure? It's starting to look like Inferno is not going to happen. If we have a G1 Inferno, probably not going to get the Fire Ant, and that sucks because he needs a new toy desperately the you know what was the last fire ant inferno toy we had a extremely limited run robot heroes minifig which i have all the way back there he came in a two-pack with um i want to say he came with uh tigatron i think he came with tigatron and like that was like the and that was in what 2007 i want to say and that was it uh where are we at dear proto do you think neil blomkemp district nine uh, oh the guy who did Ch i saw chappy i know that one i didn't see district nine. Oh no i lost your question it just bounced away oh crap where'd it go where'd it go oh no <laughs> i'm sorry hold on oh here we go do you think Neil Blockhemp would be a good choice to direct a new Transformers movie? I always say this. 
any director that's able to add emotion to something that they can't see that they're directing, which is, I think that was Michael Bay's weakness. Michael Bay was such a visceral director. He likes to see the explosions and see the car chases and see the shooting that he wasn't able to really direct the robots. And I think that's why the robots took emotional backseat as opposed to the Bumblebee movie. Bumblebee really had a lot of emotional stuff and communication with the audience and, and Charlie because the director for that one really knew how to direct stuff that was animation. I think it was Kobo in the two. Oh God, I'm so bad with it. Where's Jaws D? He would know that he's the movie buff, but um, he's good at doing that. So we would need a director. Now Chappie had a lot of that where the character was a CG robot and he had a lot of emotional stuff and communication with the audience and the, the actors. So I could see it working. I could see it, but does he know how to tell a story too? That's a different thing. We got a super chat here. I think that's what actually pushed everything out of the way here. Um, Michael Koo, Proto, do you think HasLab would do an Astro Train that's to scale with the core class figures? Well, if we're talking Studio Series 86 Astro Train, and if we have a core class Devastator, which could give us an idea, because Devastator was together inside. That would make it, let's say core class Devastator would be like maybe leader class size if it's a core class, because each individual member. And that would be the inside of the cockpit of the alt mode of, of, uh, <laughs> of Astro Train. That would make Astro Train like, oops, not the camera, the phone, the thing there. Uh, that would make Astro Train like six feet long. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that would happen. I think that would be massive, unfortunately. And again, it's is Astro Train enough equity for Hasbro to put all their chips behind them for a big HasLab project? How many people who have already bought Astro Train figures would be willing to buy another one yet again? I don't think so, personally. I think it's way too big. And uh, not not and I like Astro. He's my Astro Train out of all the triple changer Decepticons. He's my favorite one. Um, he was my first triple changer too. And I just I just can't I just can't see him. Proto Man, who would you have in a G1 Royal Rumble? And that includes surprise entrance. This was actually done in Transformers lore, and I'm a dick because I never shared it with the rest of the world. Uh, let's go grab from the God Wall. Transformers Manga 2010, 1986. The Battle Royale. Let me just get to it. Come on. Battle wrestling match for the Convoy Cup. This is a real thing. The entrance to the Battle Royale. 86 characters. Uh, let's just say a lot of stuff goes on. A lot of wrestling. Oh, look at that double axe handle by Springer. Rare piece of Transformers G1 lore. I've never scanned it. It's out there. It sits in the collection. Ugh for the time being. I've given enough for free to the world. Let that be a Patreon exclusive or something. But yeah, if there was a G1 Battle Royal, they did it. Optimus was in it too. Rodimus Prime won. No bias. The manga said so. Um, hey Proto, do you think G1 Jetfire, aka Skyfire, could use the matrix of leadership. Well, when you say use the matrix of leadership, I mean, I've always felt in a lore standpoint um, that the matrix has a chosen one kind of thing and Jetfire just isn't part of that. Jetfire is a scientist, conflicted character that worked for the Decepticons, big, strong, tough guy, smart mind, 
but not the chosen one and someone they use the matrix of leadership. I'm kind of curious because Rodimus was going to give the matrix to Springer when he thought he was dying. Obviously Sp Springer was like, hell no. But I'm really curious what would have happened if Springer took it, if it would have rejected him or not. Kind of like how Ultra Magnus had it. He was able to put it in his chest, but it didn't do anything. Didn't change him, didn't make him smarter. He didn't have the wisdom of the ages. He just was carrying it. You know, like as if he had like a fanny pack and he just kind of put it in there. It's like, it's like, oh, hey, here's the Matrix. Okay. All right. I'm just going to put that in there. Yeah. Kind of like one of those things. Proto, do you think Hasbro could release, re-release the Combiner Wars combiners as gift sets in a similar style of the Headmaster re-releases? Or alternatively, what I would like if they re-released uh, the... I mean, I have them already, but what would be better for you guys if they did the United Warrior sets, which were the box sets of the Japanese releases, which had the better paint scheme and the missing members of each combiner team. Instead of having Alpha Bravo, you'll have Slingshot. Instead of, uh, what was the name there? O Off Road, you'd have, uh, I think it was Dead End was the one that was missing? Yeah, I think it was Dead End. You know, like, I think people would prefer those, personally. Um, it would be cool if they did it, but who's a retailer that wants to have those big botcon sized box sets sitting in them? When we lost Toys R Us in the United States, we lost a platform of a company that was willing to have big sections and shelf space for big product. And I think that's why the rumor that, tit that the Titan scale is going to be discontinued after this year and they're going to stick to just two commanders instead. I could believe that. Because I don't think there's a place for Titan Scales anymore in a Walmart display. I don't think there's a place for Titan Class anymore in a Target display. May, again, maybe GameStop. But maybe GameStop's not going to be doing well after the big V is done. Because they've been having a lot of problems financially. So it's hard to say. Toy companies, they can make stuff. But they have to look at the, who's distributing their product. And who could carry it. And that's the big issue. And when you're making something big, who wants to carry it? You know? Hey, Proto, do you think Hasbro could re-release... Okay, I saw that one. What we at? Proto, if you could get a new retool of Earthrise Hoist, who would it be? Uh, the red and yellow uh, Diaclone repaint, which kind of had a hot rod kind of flavor to it, like his two little fins in the back were yellow and the body was red. You could do that repaint. That'd be pretty cool. Give him a, and it's never been given a uh, a transformer name, so you can give it some kind of cool name, you know. I don't want to say any suggestions for free, but <laughs> Hasbro people be listening. Uh, Yo, Proto Earthrise Roundabout won't be in stores ever again, will it? I missed out, and I only got run amok. Look, product gets gets discontinued, doesn't end up in stores anymore, and you just got to look at the secondary market. That's just how it is. What I always suggest is don't buy it while it's still hot. Like, obviously, it's retired now out of out of retail. It's going to be on eBay. People are going to be, like, you know, trying to, to scalp it. Wait a year when people have shifted their interest to something else and just then try to strike a loose, complete one. And I guarantee you might find one for 20 bucks, 25 bucks on eBay. That's usually the best way to go about it. Or wait for conventions if you have that option. Or someone's parts party that once in a while gets cool junk. <laughs> uh, why do I keep pimping that? I don't know why. It's not like I were going to have a TFCon anytime soon. Uh, Dear Proto, how would you write a Transformers Quantum Leap crossover comic book? Which character would Sam Beckett leap into? Would Cup and AI hang out? Well, I don't know. Who would, he, who would he leap into? You know what? It would probably have to be one of the, you know, like if he leaps into their body, it has to be someone that would have a similar personality that they wouldn't know that things are different. Then again, the way the old G1 writing style was, they didn't even realize when Optimus was the fake Optimus and prime problem. Um, I don't know. Maybe he jumps into Blue Streak, let's say Generation 1. Or like, I don't know, a more social kind of Autobot. You know, maybe Hound, I guess. And Cup would definitely probably be with AI. 
for sure. For people who know who Quantum, what Quantum Leap is, a very old show back in the day. Uh, didn't Rodimus just get the Matrix to acknowledge him because he touched it first before Ultra Magnus? That is a theory. That is a theory, but the, um, the original script of the comics... With, well, the original script, which was then used to make the comic book version, uh, he didn't touch it. So, the belief that he is the chosen one. Uh, where are we at here? Springer with the Matrix of Others just gave me a story idea for IDW. We have another super chat question by Eastman777. Pull the slot machine. Hey, Proto, best version of G1 Mirage. And your favorite arc bot. Uh, best version of G1 Mirage currently, in my opinion, still is the original 2006-2007 Classics toy. Uh, while it's not accurate to how he looks in the show or his original toy, I, I really like how it's very articulated and I like how the transformation works for the back. It's not an open wheel Formula 1, meaning it has a closed cockpit, so it's not a true Formula 1. But to my opinion, it still is the best Mirage toy that we've gotten up to this point. Um... I also really like the Flip Changer Machine Wars one, but I, I don't really count that. Uh, favorite arc bot? That's a tough one. I'm going to go with probably one of the mini bots. 1984 guys. Let's go with... Let's go with Sideswipe for regular cars. Let's go with... Ooh, that's going to be a tough one. Braun... Braun or Cliff Jumper? Ooh. I'm going to lean on Braun just a little more. You notice that my favorite color is red <laughs> with Cliff Jumper um, and Hot Rod and everybody. Uh, let's go with Braun. So we'll go with, with Sideswipe of the cars, Braun with, uh, with the mini bots. And if it was a battle between those two, I'm going to have to go with Braun because I, I love the mini bots. The mini bots are so cool. They didn't get enough love. When Braun died in the 86 movie, I was like, man, he didn't die. It's just a shoulder wound. Um, hey, Proto, who would you like to be the next bearer of the Matrix of Leadership? Well, at what point in the fiction? Like, if you're talking 86 movie, Hot Rod, and then who is he going to hand it to? Are you talking at the end of G1, after Optimus? Because, like, technically, it was G1 Optimus Prime. I mean, before that, obviously, like Nova Prime and all those and the Prima and stuff. But, um, and, and Sentinel. Optimus Prime gave it to Ultra Magnus. Ultra Magnus loses it. Galvatron, the whole deal with that. You know, so many people forget that Ultra Magnus had the Matrix. It's such a funny thing. Um, Rodimus gets it, loses it to Gal Galvatron. Scourge goes back to Rodimus. Rodimus then gives it to Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime is a zombie, gives it back to Rodimus. Rodimus gets it again, then he gives it back to Optimus. Return of Optimus Prime. Then we go into the Headmaster series, Optimus recharges the matrix rodimus gets it he becomes rodimus prime again attack of double convoy episode four it was of headmasters episode three of headmasters something like that rodimus gets the matrix then he leaves cybertron doesn't give the matrix to fortress maximus jinrai ginrai doesn't get the matrix star saber doesn't get the matrix he then uses the matrix along with the zodiac energy that is found by diatlas to then revive Optimus Prime, a.k.a. Star Convoy. Optimus has the Matrix. Optimus has the Matrix in G2. Optimus has the Matrix, assumably, during the Beast era. So, technically, Optimus Prime has the Matrix in the end. Who would have the Matrix after that? I don't know. Make a new leader character. Make it fresh and interesting. You know? I don't know who would it be. It would have to be someone new. You know? I like new, I like fresh, I like interesting. You can only have... Look, we've been recycling a lot of those old characters for so long, and they've rarely been dipping into the obscure characters. Like, where's our weird MicroMaster names? Where's our weird, like, you know, Action Master characters and Pretender Shell characters? We've really just been having the same 84, 85, 86, and maybe some 87 Headmaster guys, and that's it. Uh, Proto, how would you make a show for Transformers? I've said it before, and I actually regret doing that because it's something that's here for when one day they want to put me up to bat. I'll give you a good Transformers show. Mark my words. And I'll ask them, how is the budget? How many characters could I have? Let's be real. 
because I don't want to make a story and then be limited by the budget like Siege and Earthrise did. If I know what's happening and I know that what the players are, I'll give you a good story that'll make you have a good time. I promise you that. Um, where are we at? We only have half an hour left. Actually, no, we'll go an extra 10 minutes too because uh, we were kind of a little late. Michael Koo with another super chat question. Thank you, Michael. Proto, does anyone in the Beast Wars era have a matrix of leadership? I can't recall this ever being done. So what happened was is they created the Council of Convoy. I don't want to get up again and get the, the Beast Wars mangas. Um, but they had the Council of Convoys, which at that point, supposedly Optimus Prime is still alive and he still has the Matrix of Leadership, but they also have the Council of Convoys and they all have their own Energon Matrix and they each have one. So it's like a separated Matrix and all of those Matrices are, are tied to Vector Sigma. So they could still commune with the center of Cybertron. Vector Sigma is pretty much Primus, you know. So what happened was characters like Optimus Primal supposedly have an Energon Matrix. Like, if you look at his chest kind of shape, it's, he has an Energon Matrix. Um, Lyo Convoy, Big Convoy, they have Energon Matrixes. So they do. It's They have Matrixes. They're just not Matrix of Leadership, you know, all the knowledge of the... They're used more as power devices for attacks and powering them up and stuff. Uh, watch Beast Wars Neo. Th that probably fleshes out more of the lore of that. But don't watch Beast Wars Neo without watching Beast Wars Second. You got to watch that first to kind of have context. So that'll definitely give you that. And uh, you know, it's 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 kind of how that goes. Proto, how would you make modern pretender toys? Well, as much as I loved these little dudes here, um, and Hasbro really wanted to do this that way, they don't take a risk with full size ones. I mean. The unfortunate truth is is that while I love Pretenders and I love Master Force and stuff, it would be really weird to do that kind of product today in full size. Like to do like a deluxe kind of scale. Like I could see them, you have like a wave of generation stuff, a kingdom, Earthrise, whatever, and you put one Pretender shell. Landmine. Oh, we got to use the Landmine trademark. One Landmine, Pretender shell, half-half, you know, artic make it more articulated than just this and the half-half. But, you know, one pretender shell, you know, and then a whole bunch. Kind of like how, you know, like, yeah, you had one weaponizer. You have one fossilizer. You have one uh, modulator, like the, the MicroMaster base kind of stuff. Have one pretender shell. And then a whole bunch of stuff that makes people happy. And then see how that's received. If that one pretender shell doesn't sell well or becomes a shelf warmer, then thank God we didn't do a whole wave of them. Because these didn't sell well. I love these guys. I love them. They sold terrible. They shelf warmed like crazy. They were liquidating them. Literally, I still see them in Toys R Us to this day. I still see the Bludgeon Wave sometimes. Bludgeon and uh, an Octo Punch and all of them. They sold terrible. No one wanted that stuff. I loved it. I loved it to death. I was buying it all. People didn't like it. So I understand that. Uh. Where are we going to go here? Proto, if the Convoy Council appeared in IW Fiction, do you think they'll be portrayed as a bunch of nepotistic fat cats? I, well, the way that I see it is, is the Japanese, the way they wrote the Con Convoy Council was a very capital, you know, Japanese capitalistic kind of society. And they didn't want to make it look too negative. You know, they had Big Convoy. He's supposed to be that rebel character. So, you know, him opposing them isn't because the Convoy Council was wrong. That's just who his character is. I could see them... I don't know. You want to tell the story of this, the Megatron character. So you want to portray the Maximals and the Convoy Council and the Maximal Elders, I guess, as villains from their perspective. So they could be seen as that but it's kind of half-half. It really is in the eye of the beholder in a lot of ways, depending on how you write that story. Dear Proto, do you think Flame should be re reintroduced as a mercenary? I, I just want to cut off that for a second. There's a fan in Montreal here, a female fan. Um, I don't know if she's in the chat. Absolutely obsessed with the original Flame from the UK comics. So she would love it if we got a new Flame toy. Um, 
For people who don't know, Flame was an obscure uh, Autobot character from the UK comics back in the day. Uh, I could see him depicted as a guy who invented all the weapons and gadgets. Yeah, I would love to see Flame again also. And of course, because certain someone, someone would absolutely love it too. I don't want to, I don't know if she wants me to say her name, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> she works at Toys R Us and she's awesome um, in Canada. Hey, Proto, do you think about, uh, do you think about pretenders, but outer shells resembling Battle Beasts? Well, that, that's already, like, like once again, you're, you're, you're putting too much. It's kind of like how uh, we had those Titan Masters, that the little headmasters were Battle Beast homages, and it just went over everyone's heads. I love Battle Beasts. I love Pretender Shells. Let them be their own thing. We had the Beast Saga toy line. It came out in Japan, which was the like pseudo sequel to Battle Beasts for the 30th, excuse me, the 25th anniversary, and it didn't do well. Sold quite bad. So I was like the only person buying those. If you go on YouTube, I'm actually one of the few people that review those toys. You're going to find some old videos of me reviewing those Beast Saga toys. Uh, I would love Battle Beasts, but I think the trademark right now is not even with Hasbro anymore, unfortunately, which kind of sucks. Uh, but Pretender Shells Battle Beasts? Eh, no, I want to see my classic Pretenders. You know, give me Skullgrin. You know, give me Bludgeon. Give me Octo Punch. Give me Straggle Hole. Give me Landmine. Like, give me all those guys. You know, give me a, a, a proper, you know, really articulated Metal Hawk. That'd be so cool. That'd be so, so cool to have. We got another super chat question in the gold tier from, oh my god, I'm going to screw up your name. I am so, uh, Alan Jandro Barrera. I hope I did that right. I'm sorry. Hey, Proto Man. What are your thoughts on them doing more crossover figures, possibly with anime shows, like how the MP10 mold did a crossover with Evangelion? So the Ava thing, first of all, what people need to understand what happened with that was Hasbro had like, a, not Hasbro, Takara had this like line wide uh, crossover with Ava, where Ava was in their Shike Leon line. I wish I could reach over there. I have some Shike Leon stuff. Um... So there was Ava stuff in there. There was Ava stuff with the Takara Transformer stuff. There was Ava stuff in some of, in their other brands. So that was kind of like a whole crossover thing that happened with Ava. I'd like it personally. Um, I've always said that, like, you know, if you could do, like, Gundam proper, because the problem is Gundams are way taller than Transformers. But if you could do stuff with Bandai, that'd be really cool. Pro probably Bandai wouldn't want to play. But there's a lot of cool anime stuff that you could cross over with Transformers. I mean, I'm a huge fan of like gyro zetter like that's all my gyro zetter collection there i love gyro zetter and gyro zetter was this toy line that came out around the time of transformers prime and it destroyed transformers prime in the ratings like it got way more ratings than transformers prime did in japan and it was this great transforming robot show crossover those two what was Gy gyro zetter's konami do Konami with Konami and uh, Hasbro. Do something together. Takara. Do some cool stuff. You know? I would love to see Gyro Zetter X Transformers. Bring them together. Love that line. Love that line to that. Such a great line. Super underrated. Great show, too. Watch it on, on YouTube. People upload episodes of it. Hey, Perota, would you like an updated version of The Predators? I'm surprised they haven't done something like that. The only reason why I think they haven't is just name trademarks. That's the only reason. But, you know, there's so many, you know, like how many times could we have the same Seeker Jets all the time? Why not give us, you know, some of those those old Predators and the UK stuff and everything like that? Like, I feel like they even forgot about Skyquake. Like, Skyquake was like a thing in Transformers Prime. Like, oh, hey, here's the Skyquake trademark. And then it's like, bye bye we're never going to use that again. How did they forget that Skyquake was a thing? How did they forget about all these other flyers? You know, so it kind of sucks. But yeah. Thanks again, by the way, for the super chat question. Alejandro. Alejandro. I'm so bad. I wish I knew how to say that. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Another super chat. You think they would do another Ava fig with the Earthrise model considering the last Evangelion movie is supposed to come out? Yeah, I'm waiting for that too. 333, man. Find out what how that ends. Get that new ending from Anno. Um, 
Uh, the last Ava movie supposed to come out this year, possibly with the car version being a Hasbro Pulse. Well, assuming you mean the leader class. I don't know. I don't know. You know what would be kind of cool, though? Think about it. Some of those fossilizers with Ava colors. Think about it. Like, the way that that aesthetic design works, that would work. Don't you think? But, I mean, if they want to do something with MP... With, not with the, uh, with the leader class convoy, if they want to... I don't think they will, because when they did that last time, like I said, it was like a line-wide thing that they did. Like, it was like they... There was some kind of agreement they had at the time with Evangelion, because Ava doesn't have just one master toy license with Bandai, because they've done kits in the past and stuff like that. So it'd be very interesting to see uh, if they do do something like that in the future. Would be really cool. But you know what's funny about that... that, that MP, uh, the MP10 one? If you look at the little spike figure that came with it... I swear, if you look at the way the spike figure is colored, it looks like something out of Attack on Titan. Like the, uh, the whatever they're called there, the good guys, the the Exploration Force or something they call them, whatever. We got another super chat from Orlando Chavez, and this time he asked a question. Orlando, thank you, my friend. What's up? Orlando wants to know, I have a question this time. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> Orlando, thanks for everything, by the way. Uh, what's your favorite or some of your favorite Beast Wars toys? Ooh, boy. Um, I love Beast Wars. Let's go with... Uh, let's go with non-show characters. I think I've talked about this in the past. I think it's been asked once before. Um, I love... Like, we'll go with non-show characters first. I love K-9, Wolf Fang, those two. Great molds, if you could get those. Uh, K-9 slightly more, because I love that he's a German Shepherd, and I love German Shepherds. They are just... The best dogs in the world. I'm going to show you guys a video. I'll show you guys one video. Hold on a sec. So, one of the awesome German shepherds in my life. This is Mocha. And this is her singing. I love that dog. Anyways. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, uh, K9. Awesome. Awesome one. Um, what's another, like, a, a non-Fusor show character? Sky Shadow. Sky Shadow, which was the iguana mixed with the dragonfly. That one's really cool. And it's funny because I rarely see him in the secondary market. I rarely, rarely see him in the secondary market. It's very weird how limited he is in terms of like purchases. It's like, I see so many of, uh, of quick strike of injector. I don't see much of silver bolt oddly enough, despite the fact that he was a show character. Um, but Wolf Fang and canine for sure. Those are like two top tier ones. I would suggest beast wars Grimlock. If he didn't have GPS, if he didn't have the gold plastic syndrome thing, he's always one. I love that toy. I love that color scheme, the gold with the white, but because he's so fragile, I just can't. I just can't. I can't, like... Um, German Shepherds in prehistoric times. I know, eh? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But that's, like, definitely... Canine Wolf Fang, get those two. Those are, like... Those were, like, they should have been in the show. Um, another one, for anyone who hasn't already wised up to the awesomeness, is Razor Beast. Razor Beast is another really cool one with his little gun. Um, who else? Who else is a really good one? I'm trying to think that are like non-show characters that are sleeper hits. Baboom. Baboom is really cool. Again, he kind of appears in, in Beast Wars second as Apache, but still another really good mold. There's a bunch. There's a bunch. Beast Wars is one of those lines that, I mean, I can't even hate on Retracks. Like Retracks, like a lot of people say that's the worst Beast Wars toy, but I love him still. What was another one too? I'm trying to think of a Transmetal 2 that I could suggest. Night Glider. Night Glider, who's like the, the, the flying squirrel transmetal two with the sword. He's like he's like He-Man, but he has like a convoy head. So cool. Hope those are some good suggestions. Those ones alone, just start with those. Those ones are amazing. Those will keep you busy forever. We got another super chat from Jason Whaley. And Jason wants to know, any chance we're going to get a surprise with Netflix Kingdom where the budget is saved at the end and we get a proverbial money shot? I don't know, Jason, man. You know what? I, it's it's one of these things that we always look to the past to understand what's happening in the future 
And if, unfortunately, if Kingdom is like Earthrise, maybe four characters, and they don't transform. Maybe one of those characters transform and it's the Ark. Maybe Optimus Primal transforms. Maybe Dinobot transforms. Maybe Dinobot stays in, in Raptor mode forever. Oh my god. I don't know. I hope so. I really hope. I really, really hope that there's tons of budget, that they have enough budget to hire SAG voice actors so we could get Optimus Primal and, and everything. But and like, you know, Gary Chalk, David Kay, Scott McNeil. But I don't think so. I get, I get a feeling we're going to put all our emotions and get excited about it. And we're going to get disappointed heavily because there's so many people that love Beast Wars. And so many people consider Beast Wars the best of Transformers fiction that it's going to be hard to, to even measure that. We're going to have to go into this accepting that it's something different, but hope that it's even good on its own. And that's what I'm worried about. Thank you for the question, Jason. Uh, Proto, I thought you couldn't show a video. Please play under... Well, no, this is on my phone. I can't show a video on the computer because it's going to slow down the stream. The phone is not going to do anything. Um, and not to mention, it's not, a, it's not a video that's on YouTube that I could get flagged for. This is my video <laughs> that I recorded from home. So a little different. A little different. A little, little different. Uh, where are we at here? Proto, would you like a Convoy 2 pack of the upgraded versions of Big Convoy and Lyo Convoy? Big Convoy needs a new toy. Big Convoy is easily... You want to talk about one of the best Beast Wars toys ever made? It's Big Convoy. Granted, that's the, that's the, uh, the Bloody Tusks Nemesis Convoy version. But anyone who get that mold any way you can if you could get the big convoy version i think there was there was like two reissues recently so get like the anime accurate one or the non-anime accurate one that comes with the extra accessories get that mold that is one of the best beast wars toys ever made and it's a, it's a shell former but it comes with an op opening matrix of leadership big ass gun cool gimmick you know alt mode is as poseable as a football but that doesn't really matter you know great toy i would love i would love updates of those characters we technically got a Lyo Convoy update when the club did the, the pre-Lyo Convoy, you know, Lyo Prime using that Orion Pax mold, but we never really got, unfortunately, we never really got a decent Lion upgrade of, of Lyo Convoy outside of the Masterpiece, of course, and the Robot Master release that we got, which was a scaled down version, which wasn't really that great, to be honest. Um, so I'd love to get a cool updated version. I mean, we do ha technically have that Ferrari action figure, but that doesn't transform. Uh, Proto, if we ever get a Chug update of Deluge, would you rather he possesses his original G2 color scheme or his original IDW paint job? I would like to do G2 colors just because a shout out to the 90s kids, and I would like it if he had a water change gimmick. Because when was the last time we've had that? Think about that. When was the last time we had a Transformer toy he put it in the water, changes colors? When was the last time we had a Transformer toy that sprays water? It's been forever. It's been forever. Wouldn't it be cool to have that again? Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. Taco Tank. That's another one that's awesome. Niagara Base. That's another one. But both of them, extremely expensive. So I don't suggest those. <laughs> eBay. Beast Wars. Fusor. Sky Shadow. Current bid. $15. Ah! I... Let's put it this way. Sky Shadow... Canadian dollars, 1997, was $12.99 in 1997. If you factor in inflation, he's probably about $21 today with inflation. So for $15.50 American, which comes to about $20, $21 Canadian, right on the money. You're, there's, there, it didn't even go up in value, and it's a great toy cool like he has the hand that becomes his head he has this, the, the missile gimmick the wagging wings all kinds of cool stuff when toys were toys uh let's see where are we at where are we at sorry if i'm missing any questions everything's getting push 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 uh, and we have we're gonna have four, 14 minutes left we're gonna do i'm gonna do 10 minutes over guys because i came a little bit late so i'll do a little 10 minutes extra 
Uh, hey, Proto, is Windblade starting to make her way up as the Legendary 7? I wouldn't say she's making her way up to the Legendary 7. It's just that Hasbro for a while was looking to have, like, their Wonder Woman to their little trio. You know, you have, you have Optimus, you have Bumblebee, and you have, like, they wanted to have their female character. And Windblade really is starting to shape into that. But she's still not part of the Legendary 7 because the Legendary 7 doesn't apply to marketing. It applies to mainstream. And the problem is, is that the mainstream audience don't know who Windblade is. The fandom does. The people who watch the shows do. The people who watch the comics do. The people who watch the movies don't. So she hasn't reached that status yet, unfortunately. Maybe one day she will. Maybe we'll get a movie Windblade. And then she'll push her way up and we might have a Legendary 8. But that Legendary 7 hasn't been broken for almost 30 years. So, when it was first used in G2, when it was first really concocted. So we'll see. But I do agree, she is, she's moving on up. She really is becoming the, fa the female part of the brand. Like, it's, it, to me, it's like, like, like how DC has Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman... Or like how Marvel, I don't know, Marvel doesn't really settle on any of that, so let's put that aside. Because uh, it's not really Captain Marvel, and it's not really like Storm. You know, that always changes every decade. Um, but the point is, like, they, they really are that. So I, I would believe it. We got another super chat by Alejandro. Please, Alejandro. I think it's Alejandro. 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 Earthrise, Thundercracker, and Skywarp is back in stock at Big Bad Toy Store. Even though they were Target exclusives, do you think they would do the same for the Coneheads? Well, it's a matter if Joel and the guys from Big Bad Toy Store get cases of it. Um, a lot of times when stuff is store exclusives, it's a contract. And when that contract is done, let's say six months, they get a hold of it. So I wouldn't be surprised if Big Bad Toy Store was able to get a whole bunch of cases from hasbro and they have a great relationship with hasbro so i wouldn't surprise me thank you for saying that though joel because for anyone who didn't get that two pack go get it yo big bad toy store and they're not a sponsor they're just friends of the podcast i've known joel for many years um where are we at where are we at sorry because everything got pushed down with super chat but again Alejandro, thank you for the super chat Dear Proto, which toy line only character would we most hoping to see appear in an upcoming Beast Wars comic book? For me, it would be my boy Spitor. Did you get? I got this not too long ago, about six months ago. It's my last Spitor toy. It's the UK exclusive VHS copy version with the red body. Um. Who would I like to see? I'd like to see, yeah, Canine and Wolf Fang. I would like to. I would love to have. Because I always imagined Canine and Wolf Fang, like, like Sideswipe and Sunstreaker. I'd love to have just, like, a whole comic. Just, like, 21 pages. Their side adventure. Prime, like, let's say they were actually part of the, Ar the, uh, the Axelon crew. Primal sends them on a scout mission. And the whole episode is just them away from the base. Those two, their scout mission learning about their past together as brothers, some kind of stuff. Oh, they encounter Waspinator, they encounter, you know, whoever. Let's have another toy, toy only character as part of the 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 dark side crew, let's say Iguanus, you know. Have some kind of cool story there. I would love that. I would love that a lot. I love those two. Those were molds that were so amazing. Polar Claw, how did I forget about Polar Claw is another really good one too. Another really good one too. Uh, where we at? We got 12 minutes left, my friends. Hey, Proto, do you think someone should make Transformers based on American trains? I feel like there's a huge niche not being filled. Railroading is just as important as it here is in Japan. Well, <laughs> yeah, there is a railroad community that loves the old steam engines and stuff. But I have to tell you, Japan, when they come to their railroading stuff, it's still way bigger. Japan, it's, it's such a huge cultural thing over there that is a part of their everyday life still to this day. The Shizazi Shokens, as they're called in Japanese, the, the bullet trains are... You, you can't compare. 
it's it's something that like there's a reason why like when they do train stuff like even when they did 2006's Astro Train for classics they made him a bullet train instead of a steam train because of the Japanese influence because they're just like we got to make him a bullet train you know but yeah look traditional trains why not here in Canada we have a, a train line called Via Rail which is these big yellow trains that I have such nostalgia for as a kid going on those going from Montreal to Toronto by Via Rail I'd love to see like one of those big diesel trains and then like paint it up Via Rail, rail style do some kind of a pro promo with them that'd be really cool I'd love to see that. Uh, where are we at? Proto, you better tweet about my request. Which request? I missed something. <laughs> uh, where are we at? We have another super chat from Alejandro. The amazing Alejandro. Thank you, Alejandro. Once War for Cybertron trilogy ends, do you think they should tackle doing toys of Japanese stuff like Super God, Master Force, and Transuforma Victory? I love the show, Proto. Um, thank you, by the way. I would love that, Alejandro. Like, if, if you asked me, like, if they would do that, would you be happy? 200%. I don't think they will, though, because I've, I've said it many times. What I like doesn't necessarily mean what's good for business. Um, I think they're probably going to do either more Beast Wars with scatters of G1. I was having this discussion literally on the Discord and I was saying like how, like if you look at wave two of Kingdom coming out, there's two Beast Wars characters in it, in that whole wave. Dinobot and Air Razor. Do you know how many G1 characters are in there? Six, not counting RC, that's a, that's a repack. You got Optimus, Core Class, you got Megatron Core Class, you got Inferno, you got, um, who else is in there too that's G1? You got uh, Warpath, like there, like there's more G1 in Kingdom than there is Beast in Kingdom. So whatever the next thing is going to be, it's going to have a theme, but it's still going to be heavy on the G1 still, I feel. Like they'll still hold on to those core characters. So if, if they do next year and it's more Beast Wars, you'll get one or two Beasts, more G1. Or if it's Armada, a little bit of Armada, more G1. But Armada kind of is G1, so you could kind of, you know, interplay. An Optimus will still be an Optimus. A Hot Shot will just be a yellow Bumblebee-ish kind of character. I'm going to kind of look at the rest here to cheat. You know, a Thrust will still be a Thrust. Uh, a Starscream will still be a Starscream. A Jetfire will still be a Jetfire. You know. Uh, Orlando Chavez wants to know, what is the best Menasaur figure? Um, for the time being... Uh, probably the American release of the Combiner Wars. The Japanese one, unfortunately, has GPS, so I don't suggest investing in that one. Uh, if you want to go off the grid with weird stuff, well, you can't really see it. Um, there was a Menasaur 6-inch Titanium, which was a black repaint of Hot Rod, or Rodimus. So that's one you could also pick up. And then you have from... Uh, you can barely see him. He's in between here of these two pillars because I pushed my thing all the way too far. But um, there's also the Gigalonia planet, giant planet Menasaur from Cybertron. There's a few interesting ones. This is a G1 toy. It's also a classic. And there's also um, Combiner Force from Robots in Disguise. They did the Stunticons too. We got seven minutes left. Let's jump into some questions. Proto is Spitor, the Chad of Beast Wars. Uh, well, if you count Diver from uh, from Beast Wars Second, I wouldn't say that. The Chad of Beast Wars is Clawjaw, aka Scuba from Beast Wars Second. He gets all the ladies. He's the cool dude, at least according to that lore. So I would go with Scuba, aka Clawjaw, is the Chad. Uh, Tristan wants to know, hey, Proto, if their Jurassic Park Transformer crossover happens, do you think they will, they will be a hero or a villain? I like to feel like the T-Rex over time with these Jurassic Park movies is being, you know, portrayed as a hero. Because think about even the first Jurassic Park movie. Like, he's kind of like, oh, no, he's going to eat us and everything. And then he saves everyone. Oh, I'm spoiling these movies. If anyone hasn't seen this 25-year-old movie, I apologize. 
Uh, you know, he saves them at the end. He attacks the raptors, who I feel are really the bad guys. And then think about it, Jurassic World 1 kind of helped out and saved the lady at the end. I don't want to spoil too much, but... So I really see the T-Rex as a good guy. Rexy, whatever the name of the, the T-Rex is and that continuity. I'm not a Jurassic Park aficionado. But yeah. Who is excited about the Godzilla vs. Uh, King Kong trailer? I am, because I like kaiju stuff, Ninjatron. So I want to see it. I hope it's good. Unfortunately, it's happening during a time where we can't have movie theaters, so I hope it doesn't hurt it like it's hurt every other movie that was supposed to be exciting. So uh, let's hope for the best. Hey, Proto, if they ever make a Bumblebee with a modern alt mode, uh, I think they should make him into one of those small one-person-only cars, like Steve Urkel's car or something. Um, honestly, if they, you know, I'm surprised we still never saw Bumblebee using the new Volkswagen design. I'm surprised that Volkswagen never agreed to do that because it would be such a great cross-promotional thing obviously when when alternators was a thing you know that would have been the best time to do it but of course you know volkswagen volkswagen wasn't playing game back then that's why we didn't get a bumblebee and alternators but i i still think that would be great it'd be free advertising for them bumblebee is already walking around in a like you know look at the 86 not 86 look at the the bumblebee movie and how like he's walking around in this old alt mode that no one could go out and buy if they love it. While on when they did the Michael Bay movies, he was in an alt mode that people could go out and buy. And I, I know two people in the Transformer fandom that went out and bought that car, you know? So it completely influenced because it was Bumblebee's car. So I wouldn't be surprised if they one day, new Volkswagen, 2000, you know, 22 model, 23 model, and it's Bumblebee. It just makes sense, it'd be good business. Good business for both of them. They help each other. Because the problem is, like, you look at, like, Jazz in the 80, in the Michael Bay movies. The, Solis, the Solstice was ridiculously expensive. No one could go out and buy that. The Peter Bell Optimus Prime truck, no one's going out and buying that. You know, the, the Top Kick Ironhide, okay, I could see that one being in some people's uh, repertoire. But, you know, at the same time, like, that Bumblebee sold a lot of cars in the 2007 movie so you could do it again you could do it again i have that business side of the brain that's that's percolating outside of the reality you know uh alejandro asked another super chat alejandro man you're good with the ten dollar gold uh, super chats brother you're really good with that uh love your insight proto and yeah a lot of the g1 stuff i don't mind and one more thing what's the likeliness of them remolding the haslab unicron into primus I, again, like, if, if they did Primus, I want it to be as tall as Unicron. And if, they, if the only way that could happen is remolding him, brother, do it. I don't care. Make it happen. But I want Primus to have more of that Marvel look. You know, like the more Rodimus kind of, like, you know, shape to him. Not that I don't love that old, you know, that old Cybertron one over there. I love that Cybertron one. I have two of them. I have the alt mode and then the robot mode. Um, but, I mean do it do it i agree with you remold haslab unicron the tooling's already there the only problem is how much is that going to cost and who's paying i'll pay i'm a dummy i'm a dummy i'm gonna pay for it but are you gonna pay for it a lot of people didn't that's the problem a lot of people didn't pay for it and that was unicron i love primus i love unicron but unicron has way more stock with people so who's gonna pay for primus this dummy will but this dummy also has the Primus Unicron like two pack over there from the Transformer 2010 anniversary stuff. But there's not a lot of dummies like me, you know, for that kind of stuff. So it's hard to say. We got two minutes left and then we're done. So super chats, get ready for it. Uh, hey Proto, could you give us some advice on reviewing Transformer toys? Do what, honestly, I got out of the reviewing game because I was, it didn't excite me anymore. Like, I was making insane numbers. You know what I mean? I was making insane... Like, some of my videos had, like, over a million views, but it didn't excite me because I wanted to... Like, to me, like, it wasn't so much about reviewing the toy. It was about uh, talking about the character and his lore and history, and I found that doing the podcast gave me more of an excuse to do it. I didn't have to do as much work with the editing and stuff, and I could put out more content every single day. 
When I was doing toy reviews, it was once a month, once every two months, you know. But for you, do what makes you happy. Do what makes you comfortable. You know, if you want to hold the toy and talk and talk at the same time, like like Thu does. If you want to be behind the camera and and manipulate it, like uh, let's say Piaw or um, or uh, Optobotamus. Like, do what makes you comfortable and how you feel you want to tackle it and make it unique to you. Because that way, when people go to watch your content, it's unique to you. Otherwise, you're just another pair of hands just manipulating a toy. Why do you think Thu is so successful? Because what he does is unique. Why do you think guys like Optobotamus were successful when they first started? Because they were doing something that was unique. Or Vangelis! Vangelis' unique style of how he does reviews too. Try to do something that's uniquely you. That's how you'll be successful. That's how this is successful, what we do. There's been tons of Transformer podcasts for many years. I mean, the first podcast was Robot, Robot, uh, Radio Free Cybertron with, with Brian Kilby, and I love Brian. But what I do is very unique. We talk about finance. We talk about the reality of design. We talk about history. We talk like stuff that the podcasts don't do. And that's why I've found the success that we had. We're, I don't want to brag, but we're the number one podcast in the world for Transformers. No one has our numbers but us. When this stream is going to be done, we're going to have numbers that, look, again, I don't want to knock those guys, but I love Brian. I love all of them, TFYLP and stuff. But there's a reason why people come to watch this show because we cover stuff that is unique to this show and it's a unique take where a lot of people are just doing the same stuff yeah we talk about the news at the beginning for like a couple minutes and stuff but then we jump into the nitty-gritty and i mean the super chats keep rolling in for a reason so when you do your review do you do you and do unique and that's how you're going to succeed in life you could be there's an old saying you know everyone that's the same is going to be the same you want to be that 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 hammer that's that that nail that's sticking up you know that sticks out and people will notice you just hope no one ever hammers you down axe to the head hey proto what is the name of the most different character stuck to it had the most different different character stuck to it hey proto what transformer name had the most care oh what pro what transformer name had the most different character stuck to it um, I would have to go with probably something like Thunderwing has had different versions attached to it that were all different characters. Uh, another one is Prowl. Like Prowl has been attached to all kinds of stuff that was like different versions. Um, Hotshot's another one. Like Hotshot was, you know, uh, three different characters before we settled on what we got. Towline, you know, that's another one too. Man, you're really making me think about that one. Hmm. You know what's another one too? When you really think about it? Mirage, Mirage has been used like a, like like Thunder uh, Tidal Waves American repaint of uh, was called Mirage. You know, so like there's a lot of weird ones, but I'd have to go with Mirage or Prowl. It's one of the two, for sure, for sure. We're going on overtime. We're gonna answer two more questions. Two more super chats, and then we're calling it quits for the day. Okay, guys? So we'll do two more, and that'll be it. I just want to say, until those super chats roll in, um, thanks everyone who, who tunes in. Thanks again to Symbiote Studios, who sponsors our stuff and helps out with the podcast and everything. You know, I, I always appreciate every week that you guys tune in. I think we peaked at one point at 170 people. I know when this is going to go upload and it's going to go into the repaints, repeat, the repaints, the repeats, it's going to go into the thousands. I appreciate all of you guys who tune in, all of you guys that come on the Patreon and, you know, join the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash proto man. Got to put in that, that, that plug right there. Um, you know, that's, you know, you guys help with the prod podcast so much. You guys really do. You know, like guys like Michael here, who's who's one of the, the patrons and stuff like that. And he has his little logo. Um, you know, it, it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. It helps. It helps it keep going. And I mean, that's the reason why we're the only Transformer podcast that has news every single day. We're the only Transformer podcast that gets the views that we get. You know, it's 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 crazy stuff. And, and it's thanks to you guys again that help out. We did we did a lot of super chats today and uh 
Proto, my request is to play an appearance of ninjas in Transformers. <laughs> Uh, that would probably... Who was the very first ninja if you don't count uh, fi, uh, Nightbird? Probably it was Nightbird. Nightbird probably was the very first ninja. When you think about it. Because no one really had a melee weapon before Nightbird that was really... I mean, an axe and a... You know, Energon axe and a, a mace. You know, like, those don't really count as ninja melee weapons. No one had throwing stars back then. Or nunchucks until Nightbird came around. So it starts with Nightbird. It starts with Nightbird. And then you get a whole bunch of other stuff as time progresses, especially when you get Six Shot coming around and everything. So that's an interesting topic, though. It's an interesting topic to bring up one day in the future. Uh, but I guess we'll call it a night, guys. We'll call it a night. It was great stuff. Thanks again, everyone, for coming. You know, once again, if you want to support the podcast, check in the description below, patreon.com forward slash protoman. Come join the, the Patreon. We have an exclusive Discord where we, we cover all kinds of crazy stuff. Check us out there. Uh, support SymbioteStudios.com. Go to SymbioteStudios.com. Check out their cool stuff. They're putting out new stuff. Revealing next month, two new plushes. Two new plushes are being added to the line. You could probably take a guess who those two plushes are when we talk about the Legendary 7. But two new plushes are going to be added to the line, so get excited about that. We're going to talk about that in the future, too. We have news tomorrow to talk about. There's some new stuff I want to cover that I didn't talk about today that we're going to be doing tomorrow. Um, it's, it's related to like future masterpiece stuff that uh, we kind of have to read between the lines of what's going on. But thanks again, everyone. Check out the Patreon. Come join us on the Discord through Patreon. Uh, support the all our sponsors, Hasbro and Symbiote Studios. And thanks again, everyone who comes to hang out with the Proto Man. I hope to see you in the near future. I'll see you in seven days next week here on the podcast. And as always, roll out.